So it's my pleasure to introduce Grace Daniel. Grace is a lecturer at the Department of Nursing Science in the University of Midwife for the past 17 years. She has published about 20 journal articles, both nationally and internationally, with a passion for maternal and child health and humanized midwifery care during labor. She has worked both at the bedside and as a lecturer for the past 17 years. She currently teaches maternal and child health nursing courses at the university. She has many years of experience in research, teaching and community development. Grace was given a research grant in 2017 to carry out mentored research on predictors of precancerous cervical lesions among HIV positive women. She is a reviewer of the African Journal of Midwifery and Women's Health. So welcome Grace and we look forward to hearing your presentation. I'm just going to give you the presenter rights. There you go. Okay, thank you Ellie. Um, good evening everyone. As I've been introduced already, so I wouldn't spend too much time uh, talking about myself. Grace Daniel from University of Joss. Uh, I'll just go right away into the presentation. Um, the topic is knowledge and attitude of major free students regarding respectful maternity care in Joss presented by me, Grace O. Daniel, from the Department of Nursing Science, University of Joss. The outline goes thus, we'll be talking about the background of the study, uh, we'll be looking at the problem, the study purpose and research question, methodology, findings, discussion, recommendation, conclusion, and acknowledgement. Uh, that's what we'll be discussing um, through this. Uh, let me just take my video off so that the screen can be a bit bolder. Okay. Um, so the background of the study, uh, pregnancy, childbirth, and their consequences are still the leading cause of death, disease, and disability among women of reproductive age in developing countries. Nigeria is still a developing country, a third world country. And so we find ourselves experiencing pregnancy, childbirth, and you know its consequences, which has led to um, high maternal mortality uh, in Nigeria. Maternal mortality is highest in Sub-Saharan Africa, where the maternal mortality ratio is 100 times greater than in developed regions. In Nigeria, maternal mortality still remains high. It's about 576 per 100,000 live births. The lifetime risk of a Nigerian woman dying during pregnancy, uh, childbirth, postpartum, or post-abortion is 1 in 22. So in contrast, the lifetime risk in developing countries or developed countries is 1 in 4,000 uh, 4,900, which means that Nigeria is at the verge of, you know, collapse because our maternal mortality is so high. And a key strategy to address this high maternal and newborn morbidity and mortality is to increase the proportion of births attended by skilled births. However, WHO has raised concern that improving quality of care is paramount to reducing maternal mortality in Nigeria. And for us to talk about improving the, um, the uh, improving quality of care, then we have to talk about um, respectful maternity care. Respectful maternity care refers to the hum human and dignified treatment of a childbearing woman throughout her pregnancy, birth, and the period during childbirth. It respects her rights and choices through supportive communication, actions, and attitudes. 
Because disrespectful and abusive behaviors and environments degrade the quality of maternal care, maternity care, addressing disrespect and abuse is an important component of cultivating um, respectful maternity care in health facilities. One of the most challenging components of graduating fit for purpose respectful providers is the regular provision of and exposure to clinical practice settings in which respectful care is modeled at all times. There's a big challenge uh, of modeling, uh, you know, respectful care in during labor. And that was a cause for concern. And that's what spurred me up to do this study. The challenges of role models, both on the teacher's side and even uh, during in the clinical areas is a problem. And that's what spurred this research. So factors like knowledge and attitude play a significant role in influencing the behaviors of these students towards their clients in future. Knowledge provides a foundation for human action, while attitude towards behavior is the extent to which a person has a favorable or unfavorable appraisal of that behavior. So an understanding of midwifery students' knowledge and attitude towards respectful maternity care is important for planning effective educational programs in the universities. So the problem, the problem is basically disrespect and abuse of women during childbirth. Disrespect and abuse of women in health facilities continue to be, continues to be a prevailing public health issue in many countries and it violates the human rights of women to be treated with respect and to be free from harm. Numerous adverse consequences of disrespect and abuse on women's health and well being has been reported, including increased risk of birth complications, poor self rated health, sleeping problems, and signs of post traumatic stress disorder, and the reluctance to use health facilities. Furthermore, lack of respectful maternity care may reduce access to appropriate interventions, even among patients already within a facility for delivery, delivery care by reducing patient provider communication. Um, even though I didn't write it here, but Nigeria has a high level of disrespect and abuse. It's as high as between 20 3.7 to 98% uh, uh, prevalence of disrespectful care during childbirth. And these are what students, students will go and face this issue. And the main thing that now comes out of it is that these students see it as normal, normal practice to disrespect a woman during limbo. When we talk of disrespect, we talk about um, verbal abuse during limbo, uh, or childbirth, we talk about um, shouting at a woman, uh, lack of privacy, uh, not honoring the woman, not valuing the woman. Those are things that are prevalent even in the labor world. And it causes uh, so many havoc at the end of the day to the woman. And these are what students see. And at the end, they try to emulate it. So the purpose of this research was to assess the knowledge and attitude of midwifery students towards providing respectful maternity care during childbirth in just Plateau State, Nigeria. So the questions are, what is the level of knowledge and attitude of midwifery students towards providing respectful maternity care during childbirth? It's a descriptive cross-sectional study design um, this cross-sectional design was used because the participants were selected during one period for uh, data collection. The setting, um, it was done in the University of Jos, Nigeria. And the uh, University of Jos is a federal university that is located in Jos Plateau State, uh, part of Nigeria. It's located in the northern part of Nigeria. It's the only federal university in Jos. And, um, 
Department of Nursing is located in the main campus of the university. The university has different campuses, um, and one of the campuses is <clears throat> houses the Faculty of Health Science and Technology, uh, where Department of Nursing Science is under. So the department trains students to be nurses and midwives. The students start midwifery courses at 300 level. Uh, they, however, go for their obstetrics and gynecology clinical posting at 400 and 500 level. So at the end of 500 level, they are expected to sit for their final qualifying midwifery examination, qualifying them as midwives. So they get exposed at 400 level, and uh, normally they will have two clinical postings, one in 400, one in 500 exposing them to obstetrics and gynecology. They go to different units and uh, uh, labor ward is part of the units that they have to uh, go for postings. So purposive sampling uh, was used. Since it was just two levels that we were dealing with uh, 400 and 500 level, I felt that the whole students should be able to participate. So they were all given the opportunity to participate in this study, 400 and 500 level middle street students with a total number of 236 uh, were selected as a sample size for this research. The data were collected online. The middle street students assessed the Google form using a unique link on their phones, laptops, and iPads. And uh, it was a Google form they filled uh, they were able to fill the questionnaires on the on the Google form and submit. Uh, everything was done online. Ethical approval was sought from the university. The head of the Department of Nursing also gave approval for the conduction of the research. Each student was also given full information about the study and consent form was signed if they wanted to participate in the study. So data analysis. All the questionnaires were checked for completeness completeness. An Excel software package, Microsoft Office 16, was used for analysis. Descriptive statistics such as mean, percentage, and standard deviation were determined. A total of 24 STEM questions were used to assess knowledge with one point allotted to every correct response and zero mark for incorrect or I don't know response, giving a maximum attainable point of 24. Thereafter, a percentile graph was plotted against the score and scores corresponding to the 50th percentile and above are judged as good knowledge and those below the 50th percentile are judged as poor knowledge. The attitude of the students measured was measured with Likert scale with the option including positive or negative attitude. Test of association was carried out using a chi square. So this is just a summary of the um, the analysis. So the findings findings for knowledge we we will see that um, they had the students had good knowledge on respectful maternity care. We actually had three objectives. One of the objectives, the first objective, was to assess their knowledge on respectful maternity care. The second was to assess their knowledge on the rights of a childbearing woman. And the third was to assess their attitude towards providing respectful maternity care. So our first objective, we could see that the knowledge uh, they had was good, 90.7% high knowledge and just 9.3% had poor knowledge on respectful maternity care. The knowledge of students regarding the rights of childbearing women, uh, we see also see that they also had a high knowledge, good knowledge, 77.5% uh, uh, knowledge on uh, regarding childbearing women's rights, and uh, only 22.5 had poor knowledge on that. And then regarding attitude towards providing respectful maternity care, which is the third objective, uh, we see that 
about 88.6 of them had negative attitude towards um, respectful, providing respectful maternity care. Only 11.4 had a positive attitude towards providing respectful maternity care. Uh, some questions that were asked in this case were, case, uh, were questions regarding what would they do if they were to provide uh, care for social, in social condition, and probably a woman was not cooperating, uh, what would they do? And most of them replied, they would shout on her. That was the only way they could get her to cooperate. So it only tells us that these are things they have seen uh, while uh, in the world. And once they see such things, these are the things that they will practice, these are the things they will emulate and uh, move forward, even as they practice as midwives. So in looking at the association, the test of association, we looked at the test of association uh, between knowledge and uh, selected social demographic factors. And we looked at their class level, we looked at gender, we looked at marital status and religion. So we picked each uh, objective. And for objective one, it was only gender that seemed to be significant. So there was uh, the hypothesis that was put up was that there's no association in the level of uh, knowledge of respectful maternity care and selected social demographic uh, characteristics. And we see that gender seems to be significant. Uh, from what we had, even though I didn't put it in the slide, we had more of female, the female gender, um, you know, are more than the male gender in the class. In both classes, the females are more. So it's possible that um, it's tilted that way because of the gender um, inappropriateness. Okay, and then um, the second one was the association between students' knowledge of childbearing rights and selected social demography factors. We also found here that uh, class level and religion was uh, significant. The class level with just two classes, so class level was significant and uh, religion was significant. And in the third one, where we looked at the association between their attitude and selected social demographic uh, characteristics, there was no um, characteristic that was significant in this. So our discussion, we realized that uh, practice based on knowledge not only reflects systems thinking, but is one of the hallmarks of a profession. And in the case of midwifery, it reminds us of the link between theory, inquiry, evidence, and practice. That's to say that knowledge is very, very important when it comes to um, training students and impacting um, the, the right knowledge to students will help them to move the theory into practice. And that's why when uh, students, when we as teachers have to teach students, then we have to emphasize what is right, what is evidence-based, what has been inquired and has been proven right. And these students will tend to move it, such teachings into practice. And the teaching should shift from fact-based to value-based. If we really want to uh, improve respectful maternity care, then our teaching has to be more of value-based. Since from the findings of this study, we see that their attitude is negative, and that's because they have seen um, the, the models of midwifery or childbirth to them is on the negative side. And so they have built their value towards the negative. And so as teachers, as, as uh, lecturers, we have to um, ensure that our teaching is more of value-based. And if it's value-based, they will go on to impact some values that even when they get out there, when they start practicing, those values will remain 
in them. Secondly, recent publications note that exposure to disrespectful care during midwifery training can be common and eventually becomes justified by students contributing to the normalization of mistreatment in facility-based childbirth. Okay, so um, publications have come out to say when these students are exposed to disrespectful patient care during their training, it becomes a norm. It is it's seen as everything is, is normal and it's, it becomes normal to shout at a woman during delivery. It's, it becomes normal to slap uh, her laps. Uh, uh, now they call it therapeutic slap. It's normal to, to give a therapeutic slap to a woman just to make her cooperate. Uh, it's normal to expose her and not use, uh, consider her privacy. Okay, so and when students come out with that idea, it's, it becomes, um, it's, it's not good because uh, by the time they start practicing, they will see it as normal to do all these things. Developing caring attitudes and meaning of course, through one's lived, life, lived experiences of caring, as well as through learning human caring acts by studying, self-reflecting, and observing members of one's profession. So these three are very, very important. And we have to, as lecturers, emphasize that in students, that it's not all about you know, just going, taking a delivery, the head comes out, you just bring out the baby. You still have to do so many other things for women. And that's why we have to study. We have to study to be good. And then there must always be self-reflection. What did I do that was wrong? What didn't I do that, you know, was this woman satisfied with the care that was given? If she was not satisfied, what went wrong? And what were the things we were supposed to do that we did not do? This self-reflection helps to, you know, reorganize things and helps to have a better experience, you know, in other deliveries. And then observing members of one's profession is very, very important. These experiences and external sources combined with the more internal understanding of oneself together will enhance the caring capacity. So recommendation, uh, modeling is uh, modeling what is right on the part of the midwives to these students is highly recommended. I've been, uh, I'm doing a study and the study is on um, uh, promoting respectful maternity care. And from this study, I'm looking at the perspective of midwives and, and the, the women. And you could see that the midwives have their own complaints and talk about how the women are not cooperating. And the women also have their own part and complain that the midwives don't understand with them. They are the ones in pain. So uh, we have to come to a point where these midwives have to be trained and retrained. They have been trained. That's why they are practicing. But they need to be retrained and emphasis must be put on uh, providing respectful care despite all odds. Even though disrespectful care is a multifactorial uh, problem, it has issues all around. There are issues with um, uh, midwife salaries, there are issues with uh, even the antenatal care. The, there's, there's the issue of women not getting you know, the right education during antenatal care. And so when they come in for labor, they don't want to cooperate with the midwives, which uh, is a big problem. And when students see these attitudes, they just imbibe them because they feel they are right. So we need to, our, our main target will now have to be the midwives who are practicing in the labor wards. They have to be trained and uh, retrained on respectful maternity care. So, and that uh, encompasses the modeling that we are talking about. So training and retraining midwives regarding the promotion of respectful maternity care. We also emphasize collaboration between the medical 
nursing and midwifery councils to embed principles of respectful care within professional standards, including mechanisms that support and enforce implementation of respectful care standards. When we talk about mechanisms, uh, most some hospitals have a mechanism where when a woman is maybe not treated well or she's not satisfied, she can report you know, to a higher authority and the authority will pick it up, probably calling the nurse uh, or the midwife to order. Okay, so uh, the essence of this is that when there are mechanisms that are set up, these mechanisms help to control uh, midwives from, you know, maltreating women or abusing them in any way. There should also be a focus beyond immediate cause of mistreatment. According to some uh, researchers, the they focus said they, they said focus should not be on the immediate cause of mistreatment because most of us will look at what actually caused this mistreatment. But our focus in this case should improve teaching on professional ethics and work towards producing respectful health care providers. So our focus is now going to shift back to we the teachers. We have to imbibe uh, professional ethics into our students. We must teach them what it means to be professionally, uh, to do things in an ethical manner. And when students know how to do things in an ethical manner, they will stick to that because uh, the likelihood of them having issues at the end of the day would uh, be ruled out. So, um, yes, so the essence is focus on teaching and when you focus on teaching, it would uh, teach you respectful maternity care. It will reduce the effect of uh, maltreatment in healthcare providers in the future. So in conclusion, our research has shown that majority of students have good knowledge about respectful maternity care and knowledge of the rights of childbearing women but they have negative attitudes towards caring for women in a respectful manner. So student-faculty caring relationships combined with role modeling during the educational process are the best possible ways to help students learn professional caring. I must also emphasize that we lecturers, we teachers, uh, uh, we should also be role models. It's not just the midwives that uh, working in the hospital. We as, as lecturers, if we respect, uh, we respect people, then they would also respect us. If we respect our students, they will also respect us. So it's easier for us to teach, tell them about respect if we respect them. And uh, it will go a long way to solve this issue of uh, disrespectful care uh, during maternity care or during childbirth. I must acknowledge the head of department nursing university of JOS and all the students study participants from the department. Uh, they were of great help to help actualize uh, this study. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Grace, for sharing that so needed research. Um, there has been lots of studies in and the, the more we know about this, then the better, I think, for women and, um, and midwives to do better. So we've got chance now for some questions, just 10, 10 to 15 minutes or so. So if anybody has a question, I think most people are listening only. So if you would like to write it in the, the chat box, then um, Grace, I'm sure, would be happy to answer any questions. Is there, is there any 
<clears throat> mentors within practice for students to have as support in learning that kind of respectful care and what should and shouldn't be taking place? Okay, yes, we do. We do have um, clinical instructors uh, who visit the students during their clinical postings. Uh, even though we have the issue of uh, a large number of students and uh, just few clinical instructors. And so uh, the clinical instructors uh, choose to visit them part time and uh, see them do in their clinic during their clinical postings. And uh, these clinical instructors are midwives. They are nurses, they are midwives, and they have been in midwifery for some time. And so they are able to train these students while on the ward. The only issue is um, like um, labor ward. It's not everyone that is allowed into the labor ward. Okay, so um, it's, um, it's not, um, they do visit them there, but not as often as they will in other areas too. So there are, there are people that will, that will serve as um, uh, clinical instructors to instruct them while during their clinical rounds. That's, that's good that they've got that support and that, that network of people that they can have as role models. Do you think that women are becoming more empowered to, to speak out when they feel they're not getting the care that they deserve or need? Well, in Nigeria, Nigeria, it's um, not all women speak out. Uh, women that feel they are disrespected, some of them will just, uh, they don't speak out because that mechanism of telling someone this is what somebody has done, that mechanism is not there. And so some of them feel bad. They just, they just keep it inside of them and uh, say this is they say it to maybe their friends and colleagues and um, it's just in just a way of saying don't go to this hospital this is what the midwives did to me the last time I was there and so they will not complain to any there because there's no mechanism in the hospital but they will complain to other people outside which uh, tends to make people not want to go to the hospital again and then secondly for most women, they don't feel anything is done. Like I spoke to one woman and I asked her, did they cover you when you were in labor? She said, no. Did they use screens? She said, no. I said, ah, so you were exposed. She said, yes, every woman was exposed. So everybody that they, what was in their mind was just the pain. So they are carried away by the pain of labor and not even minding the privacy issue. So. For women, for some women, it's now becoming a norm that is it normal for you to be shouted at. The midwives are just trying to help you. And uh, that's what, that's the idea, ideology that most women carry. But I'm doing a study and I hope at the end of this study that um, things would, would take shape because it's basically on improving respectful, promoting respectful maternity care and um, still working on it. And hopefully when it's out, we'll be able to bring out something that would help both the women and even the midwives at the end of the day. I think it's really important that, um, so I am from the UK and I think often midwives in the UK, maybe even um, other well-resourced countries feel that, um, that, that this is a problem that's not theirs. But from my experience, women in, in UK hospitals also experience disrespectful care. And and a lot of the research around this is in um, African countries. And I think we have a lot to learn from your research. Um, so it will be really interesting when this research is finished and you have some 
some clear way forward to improve the education. And I think um, it's really important that all countries really take a look at this research and, and see how they can improve their care and their education. Yes. In the UK, we have so many um, women that come here from other countries and the British people are very poor at learning languages and um, and this sometimes results in disrespectful care because they don't have the facilities or um, or even look for the facilities to help women when they don't understand the language or it's acceptable to get an interpreter and explain everything that might happen to them in their labour and consent them for everything at the beginning when they've just come in in the beginnings of labour and expect that woman to take it all in and to understand it and then to remember it if her labour doesn't progress or she needs some help and assistance and it's it's not really respectful an understanding throughout the whole of her labour and somebody that communicates with her yeah, communication is an important aspect. Um, even in Nigeria, we have the issue of communication. Um, from what I've gathered from my research, uh, some women feel the midwives don't talk to them. Uh, they would check them, probably do a vaginal examination. And instead of telling them, Madam, you've gone this far, they would just, you know, remove their hands and tell the other nurses or their counterparts, oh, this woman has gone this far. And it's like they don't communicate directly to the woman how far she has gone and uh, how she she's doing well or not doing well or something. Uh, they just ignore her. And um, if we want to relate it, it has to be a person-centered care. Every care that we give must be person-centered. You, ha you have to involve the woman even in decision making and um, the issue of episiotomy, we discussed, uh, asked that and uh, nurses, the midwives don't even inform the women that they are going to give them a cut. The women just feel a cut and it's at the end that they tell them they give them a cut. And um, uh, that's not respectful at all. So these are the things that uh, is being done and uh, students see them and it's not encouraging at all that students see these things and they will end up practicing it you know the way it's been the way they see them and uh, so that was just just the essence we're trying to push for a movement against disrespectful care and uh, in a in a country or in a in a locality where it seems to be a norm to be shouted at and everything and even the women are accepting that in fact one woman said uh, the nurse is just trying to help me. That's why she did that, and it's now becoming a norm. And so we should uh, we should not accept that as a norm. It shouldn't be. Mm, that's interesting how the women are now normalising it and and justifying. Yeah, that really thought provoking presentation. I think it will stay with with us for a, a good time afterwards and. Hopefully we can reflect on our own practices and and uh, and really think about the care that we give women. Um, keep on going with your research. It's um, it's good to have people like you fighting for these women's rights. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.